Blanquette is a classical dish of French cuisine that is served in Parisian bistros. To make a blanquette, you will need veal shoulder cut into about one inch cubes, peeled carrots, onion, green part of the leek or the white, mushrooms, salt, white pepper, pearl onions, chopped parsley, butter, flour, sugar, rock salt, bay leaves, cream, garlic, cloves, and bacon. In Blanquette, there is blanc, so which means white. So every Blanquette will always be in a white cream sauce. This is why we are going to start by blanching our meat to remove a little bit of the blood and some impurities. Place the meat into a large pot. Add cold water over. Just to cover the meat. Maybe a tiny bit more. On high heat, bring the blanket to a boil. Prepare the aromatic garnish. Put the rock salt in a separate pot, along with the bay leaves. Cut the carrots in four lengthwise. So, and put them in the pot. So cut it in half and then in four. We don't want to have the carrot cut into two small pieces because later on we will have to take them out. Fold the leeks in half and tidy it up. Like a little bundle. Same thing, we're going to take it out later on. For the onion, we're not going to cut it. You're going to prick the cloves into the onion, just like so. Add the onion to the aromatic garnish. Our meat is boiling. Let's check it out. Skim off the blood. Strain the meat into a colander. So we boil the meat for about a minute, not even. Then refresh the meat with cold water. Right. Add the garlic before I forgot. Add the meat and cover with cold water. You want to have all the ingredients totally covered by about an inch. Take it back to the stove. Bring the liquid to a boil on high heat. Let's make the garnishes. The first thing we are going to do, we are going to soak the pearl onions to make their skin a little bit tender and it will be easier to peel. So place them in a bowl and cover with hot water from the tap. Let them soak for about 15 minutes or until you are ready to peel them. How to clean mushrooms? If you are using wild mushrooms that might be very sandy and full of dirt, then plunge them very briefly in cold water and shaking them, then leave them in a colander to drain. Mushrooms absorb moisture very quickly, so avoid blotting them. To clean bottom mushrooms, you will need a brush, cold water, and just brush them up. Typically, commercial mushrooms are not dirty. White bottom mushroom brown very quickly. So I bought them, they were beautiful about five hours ago and they're already brown. Amazing. This is why you have to keep them away from the light and in a paper bag if you want to keep them fresh. Let's pretend that you forgot 
your mushrooms in the paper bag for about 10 days in your fridge. They will brown still, they will become behind brown. You could give them a second life if you're going to cook them by peeling them. I'll show you how. Just remove the skin like that. There you go. Our blanket is boiling. Cook the blanket uncovered for about an hour. I'm going to show you how to slice your mushroom. For the blanket, we're going to cut them into quarters. So trim the end off first. Cut the mushroom in half, if they're large. Then cut diagonally like so. It smells very healthy, it's very nice. Cut the bacon into little lardons. Let me show you what is a lardon. So my bacon was the end of the bacon. It's more like in Canada, we call it Canadian bacon. Uh, it's a double smoked bacon, it's beautiful. Cut it into three quarter inch steak and cut it cross wide. So those are lardons because there is the back bacon, the fat and the meat again. So my bacon is not very fatty. There's almost no fat, it's more meat than fat. Now it's time for us to cook our bacon along with our mushrooms for the aromatic garnish. Heat the skillet. My bacon doesn't have any fat almost, so I have to nourish him. I have to give it some butter a little bit. If your bacon at home is very fatty, then you don't need butter to start it, okay? So, about a tablespoon of butter. Let it melt a little bit. Add the bacon. along with our versions. Saute the bacon and lard all together. And cook them for about eight to 10 minutes on medium high. If you don't know how to saute, then stir. But maybe it is time to learn how to saute, jumping the food in the air. So the idea when you saute is to place your pan going down like that. So you hold it and you, you decline it, okay? Incline, decline. Then by doing so, the food will slide almost to the edge of the pan and then you just have to bring it back up. And this is why it's sauté, it's jumping in the air. Practice will make it perfect. Let's see sauté. Oh, du mister. Try to have your mushroom well golden and the bacon a little bit crispy. Not too crispy, but a little bit. So here, another maybe a couple minutes. Great. So, I'm going to strain the garnish into the sieve here because I want to remove the fat. So. And now, prepare the onions. 
to peel the pearl onions, cut both hands and pick up the skin. You may find pearl onions in several colors, whites are the most common, but sometimes you could find them in red or in yellow. They are super good. They make great garnish. To glaze the pearl onions, you will need a pinch of salt, like so, sugar, a little bit of butter, about a tablespoon of butter, and some water, just enough to cover. There we go. Just enough. Barely. Get a piece of parchment paper, so something square or rectangle, doesn't matter. Fold it in half, then again in half, okay? Well, everything has been folded. Fold it again on the closed side, fold it again. We are not going to make a plane, we are going to measure the center of the part, okay? Hold it. Grab scissors, cut with a round shape the piece of paper. Up. Cut the end off for a cheminée. Open the paper and place it on the onion. So now the steam, when the water will boil, the steam will build up between the onion and the paper and extra steam will go through the cheminée. The water is going to evaporate and the glaze is going to get started. The sugar and the butter with a little bit of the water will make the pearl onions shiny. This is what we call glacé à blanc. There are several glazed. There is à blanc, white, where the product or the food will not color. Then there is glacé à blanc, which is blonde, where you keep cooking the glaze a little bit until the sugar starts to caramelize and become blonde. And finally, there is glacé à brun, which is when the food caramelizes to a brown color. So, when you glacé, always make sure you know which one you should do. Glacé à blanc, blonde, or brown. The food will be different. The flavor will be different. Today, our sauce is white, blanquet, so we are glacé à blanc. Cook on medium heat the pearl onions and we are going to let evaporate the water until they become shiny and they will be just cooked. Meanwhile, our blanquette is still simmering slowly. I think it's going to be time to check if it is cooked. Grab a piece and take it to the cutting board. Cut it in half and taste. It is cooked. You ha just have a little bit of bite, so maybe another five minutes, but that's it. As the meat is almost cooked, start our roux in order to make our sauce. Let's go to the stove. Turn the heat on, on medium. Add the butter. Let it melt. Add the flour. The combination of the butter and the flour is called a roux. Cook the roux for about one to two minutes, and meanwhile, we are going to go fishing. Remove the leek into a bowl, the onion, so we are going to remove the aromatic garnish. This is why we cut it in big pieces. Bay leaves, 
the garlic. Place a sieve over the roux or the, or the, and add the stock. So half of it to start with. Whisk. Add the rest. So the sieve and the rest. the velouté, we are making a velouté now, so bring the velouté to a boil in order to cook the roux, add the cream and bring the velouté to a boil. The onions are still firm a little bit, so I'm going to let them cook. Taste. Season the velouté, pinch of salt, little bit of white pepper powder because I didn't put any yet. Whisk well and bring the velouté to a boil. So my velouté is boiling. It's time for us to check the consistency. With a spoon, check the consistency. So right now. My velouté is too thin. I have to reduce it a little bit. I have a lot of sauce, so I can reduce it in order to have it thicker. If you don't have too much sauce, then add a little bit more roux. So make more. So, so because I know I'm going to reduce it, I haven't seasoned my sauce too much. I'm boiling the sauce in order to reduce it, to have it a little bit thicker. That gives me a chance to skim it. There's not much liquid left on our onions, so I'm going to check the, if they are cooked. Yeah, perfect. So let's remove the paper. And we're going to add them to the top of the mushrooms. Turn it off. Our velouté has reduced enough. It is coating the spoon nicely. Perfect consistency. Then taste. Perfect. If you think you had, if you need a little bit more, if you need a little bit of seasoning, salt and pepper, add a little bit more. In my case, it's great. So now I'm going to add the meat back and the aromatic garnish. So add the mushroom, bacon, and onions. Mix well and reheat it for about three to four minutes, just to make sure all the ingredients are very hot. You see why here we place a sieve, we strain the fat from the bacon earlier, so that won't go in the food. Typically, we don't use the aromatic garnish in the blanket, but there is nothing wrong to dice it up 
and stir it into the sauce at the last second. At least for the carrots, it will be delicious. Serve the blanket. Add chopped parsley. So always clean your dishes when you plate. If you have any drops of sauce, then sprinkle a little bit of chopped parsley. Serve the blanket with rice, cooked Creole style or pilaf, veal blanket. Bon appétit!